Welcome back to The Fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Actual Play Campaign. I'm Monty Martin, running the game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the human swashbuckler rogue, and we're joined today by our very good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joel Gorman, playing Wrath, the Azamar warlock. Thanks for joining us once again, and as always, be sure to check out all of our great content over on YouTube as well, where Kelly and I post new videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays with guides for players and DMs. You can also join us on Tuesday evenings when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. With that, let us return to Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Following the defeat of the Green Dragon Trethesia, Wilhelm, Rudy, and Wrath managed to negotiate with the dragon's surviving spawn to save the life of Corbin, as well as one of the other apothecaries, Dr. Lizanne Bean. After doing so, they were able to plunder the treasures of the dragon's horde, including claiming the mighty blade Varenthorn, the elven crown blade for Wilhelm this powerful weapon in hand. You are now able to collect your hard-earned plunder from the dragon's lair and depart with the rescued captives. As you clamber your way out of the dragon's lair, the kobolds that once served Trithesia are already becoming almost feral without anyone to command them around, many of them scampering off into the wilderness and otherwise. And it is as you leave, that, and it is as you exit that you find that the other apothecary that you had assisted er earlier, Urian Muller, is there with his students, and as you clamor outwards, the very groggy Lizanne Bean um, greets Urien Muller and the two turn to the both of you and say, thank you so much. Zanbean says, I know you didn't come for us. You probably felt that we were your enemies, especially after what our colleagues did. But we're thankful that you came. Us and our other students, they gesture to several of the other students that are there, are alive because of you. I mean, I'm glad we were here to help, but I hope that in due time you'll realize the mistakes y'all made in coming and doing what you did, and that the lives of the students you have here are worth more than your research. Yuri and Muller narrows his, his gaze and says, I do not doubt the value of a life. I maintain, though, that our work here was important and worthwhile. Perhaps we bit off a bit more than we could chew. And Lizanne Bean says, yeah, I think I'm gonna stick to lab work for the next couple of years, at the very least. Field work is not necessarily, as much as it was fantastic to gather specimens, Dr. Muller, I think I'm going to leave the field work behind me. That's a favor to us for all the help that we have lent you and for the trouble that you put these students through. We do have one student who um, 
was used by Everett Freed in a manner in which we've never seen before. We are still on the hunt for Everett Freed. He's seemingly been able to switch bodies. And the Duke's son, Kristoff, was one such body that he decided to take over. The Duke has asked us to bring his son back. We were able to recover the body, but the brain has been removed. The the two apothecaries, their eyes go wide, and, and Urien Muller says, uh, I don't know. I've treated a lot of sick people in my time, and but it sounds like the boy is dead. I mean, with the missing brain, I could have assumed as much. I just didn't. I thought maybe there was some apothecary concoction that, that was at play here, and the brain was in a jar in the school and could be reattached. I know that Freed had several brains in his office. Uh, I don't know if one of them belongs to the boy, but perhaps I am just grasping at straws, so to speak, in hopes of finding something. Zan Bean says, I'm, I'm a chemist, not a surgeon by any stretch. Everett Freed knew more about anatomy than all of us, and if there's anyone that could bring him back, undo his own work, it would be him. I think that you might find a little more luck with the Flame Keepers than with us at this point. Well, the least I can do is return the body to his father, I suppose. It hopefully won't ruin relations between us, but this is a terrible fate for a student to befall at the hands of a, a, a faculty member, someone who the boy would have trusted. In the future, it is reassuring to know that there are apothecaries working at that school who mean well. But if I'm going to be king of Westamar, I may need to put stricter rules on the practice of apothecary magics and medicines. I do think that the research you're doing there is important, but under no circumstances should kids who attend that school be put in harm's way, be brought out to dragon lairs, or be used for evil plots of misguided scientists. Your Majesty, says Lizanne Bean. We had to do our work in the shadows because we feared what both the Academy and the church as well as the nobility would do if they knew the type of work that we were doing. Despite everything that's happened, I still believe that we can do good things. You have it in your power to protect us, to support us. We don't deserve anything given what you, what has happened. But I would ask that you consider endowing a royal apothecary society. Support this work. What happened, happened because we were forced to work in the shadows. Dr. Out of fear Bean. for our own lives. Dr. Bean, I've talked to members of the Silver Order now, the Amethyst Academy, and yourselves. All three of those pillars seem to work in a way in the shadows for fear of the others. I see a time upon us where I hope that we can all be open with one another and by sharing information and explaining to each other what it is that we are working on and what it is we do, we can protect the future generations of this nation. People who strive to learn science can become apothecaries and practice it under the great leadership of professors like yourself. Those who are born with magical powers can operate within the academy without 
having to be scared of persecution. And those who follow the faith don't have to be worried that they are at war with mages and apothecaries. If all three of those pillars operate openly, then perhaps there's a way for us to move forward with this. That is my goal. It may require some rearranging, but it seems that the Apothecary uh, Board of Professors is already rearranging itself, seeing as we've killed two of them and there's another one that we are definitely uh, going to bring in uh, dead or alive. But as long as you practice with good intentions, I will do my part to make sure that you can speak on what it is that you are teaching to the nobility of this nation, and we can approve it for future generations. The two look and Yurian Muller says, very well. We submit ourselves to your mercy and your custody, your majesty. Do with us what you will. I want you to return to the school and clean things up. Then let's get going. There's nothing else left for us here. These rogue <laughs> magic users. I think we'll have to think long and hard about how we approach a place where those not gifted with the arcane you wield such power. Mm. It's why it's why the academy exists. They are light years behind. And they are dangerous. Wrath, you should know more than anybody that there are people out there who are not born with mage blood, who still want Me? to practice powerful abilities. And sometimes people go to great lengths to do so. I see the practice of science uh, in some ways probably more appropriate than other methods I've heard of. I don't get what you're saying. Don't worry about it. We're not, we won't <laughs> dig into that one, but there is a place for it. It just needs to be understood and monitored, not controlled with an iron fist, but we shouldn't have people like Everett Freed doing whatever they want to students. That's, they've crossed a line and now we know that there is a line and we need to establish that line. I think the only addition I would say to be mindful of is when we move forward in this new space is intent is different than outcome. And a lot of people may have good intentions around the work that they want to do. Maybe good, maybe bad, maybe neutral. But what they're actually doing makes a difference. And this is why the nobility, the mages, and the church, as the three pillars of our community, will need to decide together on an organization of apothecaries as a fourth pillar of our nation. Is there anything you would like to do around the Dragon's Lair or around the Evertree before you head back? And also, how are you heading back and where are you heading back to? Uh, I want to gather more stuff for Evertree tea. Okay. I was going to say that was, that was <laughs> more Evertree tea. I'd love to uh, have some uh, stuff at least ready to enjoy it ourselves. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. us. Yeah. And uh, other than that, I think, yeah. Just... You've got all the loot that you want to loot. You might have to send someone back for all the gold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll, 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 we let the dragon know that there's a. Uh... We filled the I think bag we of brought, holding. We brought as much as we could. Do Unli you want to fill Dreamland or we no? We fill Dreamland. <laughs> Unlimited funding. Okay. Well, how are you, where are you going? Where I are you guess, going next? Up to you. I guess, guess. we've got to bring the body back to uh, to the Duke of... Uh, are we giving up on Everett Freed? Well, we don't have a lead right now on where he went. Um, we have this body. We should probably return it. But then the next course of action is finding out where Everett Freed has gone. Everett Freed just... Is there a... Tr I'm going to search the area to see if there's any trail of Everett Freed. Or where you can send may. Houdini around too and do a couple laps of the area. Okay, all of you can give me either survival, perception, investigation, or nature. 
19 in perception. 10 in nature. 24 in investigation. Okay. Searching around the rest of the environs of the Evertree, which takes the better part of the afternoon, you locate the other camps that were used by the other apothecaries, and they have burned. Everett for, wherever Everett Freed camped out, there is, most of everything is burned to the ground. Mm. Um, they have destroyed what they left behind, and even abandoned, the, you see the remains of the cart that was even described to you. The trail leads off into the depths of the forest, and because you have taken like two rests since then, they've got two days ahead of you where, wherever they've, they've gone. Mm. Um, but one thing that you do discover as you search through the, what remains in the, in the site. The campsite of Everett Freed and Cena Rinks is devastated. The other materials gathered around there are mostly gone, but you do manage to locate in the midst of the ashes are several books and documents that they have burnt. Most of them are the remains of several research notes that they were keeping, several textbooks, but in the midst of, of them, there is a tied together folder with several letters of correspondence. Almost all of them have been very carefully reduced to ash but there is one thing that is still somewhat intact in the midst of all of, of it all. It's melted, almost entirely destroyed, but it looks to be the remains of a stamp or a seal that a noble would use to mark their letters with. Do I recognize? Give me a history check. Three, which means it's a 10, which means it's a 16. Looking it over, the sigil itself is very, very worn and very hard to fully, fully assess, but it's the marking of a boar's head. Boar's head. Who uses a boar's head? Ludwig von Fritz. Does that look like a boar? Or does that look like a griffin? It's, it's a little melted. More pig-like qualities. What do you think? I mean, that is a tusk, so I would say. Like, oh, that, yeah, okay, yeah, if that's, I, yeah. Flip it around. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's not a beak, it's a tusk. Oh, yeah. okay, there it is. Yeah. This is the seal of Ludwig von Fritz. Totsfeld. Why would von Fritz be involved in anything like this? I knew it was von Fritz! I, I yell. Did you? No. I said it in my head. I just, I, 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 I squinch. I squinch Since a little Since when bit. did you have a vendetta against Von Fritz? <laughs> this, I mean, it makes sense that Von Fritz, in his time as a duke, has cared little for the well-being of civilians at the cost of wealth and prosperity for his kingdom and his nation. Uh, he has made choices such as reopening the mines when they were extremely dangerous in his own city, just because he couldn't 
fathom the idea of losing the income that they provided at the cost of lives. It's why he's always been an enemy of my family. He was a very, very much an enemy of my father, which is why certain tactics were called upon, unfortunately, that brought in the lives of those same innocents that he would spend easily. It's not past him to fund Apothecary's experiments in hopes of gaining more for himself at the expense of students that he doesn't even know or care about. I guess the question is, was it targeted towards anything in particular? If he was attempting to use the Apothecary's in the assassination attempts against me, then that funding of their experiments would have been directly linked to an attempt to get rid of me. Does, does that make sense? Like treason? Sounds like it. I mean, I wouldn't put it past him, to be honest. What I know of him, he's a rotten man. Literally and figuratively. He's rotting. Um, <laughs> um, I guess at this point, do we know if that's where Reed is gone? Back to his patron? Do we know what's happening with the Duchess's body? If Everett Freed and Duke von Fritz are working together, that means that Everett Freed has a lot of funding behind him to, mm. to do experiments on the corpse of the Duchess. The only lead that we have right now and the only thing we have to work on is that perhaps Everett Freed has fled to Toddsfeld, which is actually in our favor. Because that is the next location on the list that we need to go to. And as much as I've been dreading it, if all of our enemies are gathered in one location, it means that if we go in there with all of our forces combined, perhaps in one fell swoop we can put an end to the reign of these enemies of ours. But more importantly, bring them in line. They need to realize that you are the king. I don't know if they're ever going to fall in line. I think Fritz is going to take this to his doom. Well, then we will replace him. I, I don't say this lightly, but von Fritz, if he is responsible for funding the apothecaries, which in turn was, was, was created assassination attempts on myself, then Von Fritz has committed treason, he is an enemy, and I doubt he can be reasoned with. I don't take a call for someone's head lightly, and I won't make that call to anybody but you two right now, but I assume this is a situation where Toddsfeld is going to need new rulership. Mm. And Duke Von Fritz may need to act as an example that Wilhelm von Kessel does wield power. Power. No, don't you chant it. Your, it, shake it makes, your sword. It makes, shake your sword. No, it makes me feel uncomfortable if you start whispering power. In my power. Head. Okay. Yes, I'm regretting this already. I believe, <laughs> I believe you call out uh, the Duke and demand his immediate surrender for crimes against the crown. He will likely resist, and it gives us the go-ahead to push through. Question is, do we need more proof than a seal on a, on a letter? Well, if we return to Altbrook and deliver the body to the Duke, we can ask if Everett Freed has been spotted returning there. We can talk to the faculty of the school, see if any strange ongoings have occurred in our absence. 
If Everfried hasn't returned there, then he's either somewhere that will become known to us over time, or he's in Toddsfeld. Either way, if he's not in Altbrook anymore, then we should carry on our path to Toddsfeld. Because, I mean, there's always a trail to follow. Speaking of the trail, what trail are you going to take back? We're going to go back. Go back to. Uh... We're going to teleport. Okay. To Drakenheim. Oh. Okay. Or at least we can go to um, Emberwood Village. Oh. Uh, right. Yeah. And then. And then. Can we get uh, my son to River? Is that something doable? Is she in Drakenheim? I don't uh, know. Last you spoke with River and Eldrick, pretty much everyone in Wilhelm's crew is still in Altbrook or was going to investigate the situation in Toddsfeld. Mm. That was where you sent Rickard and the Steel Fangs. So we need to get your son to Altbrook because mm. I think that's where River and Eldrick are. We can get, if we can get everybody to... back to Altbrook. So what's the fastest way to Altbrook if we can teleport? It's probably faster because you wouldn't be going through the forest. It's probably faster to actually go back to Emberwood Village and travel from Drakenheim to Alt Altbrook. Yeah. Okay. 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 Because you know the teleportation circle there. The yeah. only other faster route would be is if you wanted to try to contact someone from the academy who knows actual teleport. Do you know how to contact? Can you like get Aldrich over here? No. You... Uh, I I fly solo. <laughs> Do you? Can you send a message for me? Yeah. I grab a bird. <laughs> hey, go tell, go tell, oh, go tell the academy that I need help. <laughs> did you cast and a spell, we... <laughs> or did you just say that? I grab another bird. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have Animal Messenger? Oh yeah. Okay. But the first bird you didn't cast it, you just grabbed a bird and whispered to it and then it flew away terrified. Yeah, it's over there and it's looking at me, like, it's staring at me. I'm sorry. Hey you, this time, this time I cast Speak with Animals. No wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Uh, if you're doing Animal Messenger, animal. unfortunately Animal Messenger will only get you within a, uh, covering about 50 miles or per 24 hours. Okay, yeah, so the bird could do it. Oh wait, what if we do, what if we... They said they're, they're two days ahead of us, right? Everett Freed is. Everett Freed. Yeah. Everett Freed and his, uh, and Cena Rinks have had at least two days to go wherever they're trying to go by whatever means they have available to them, which in in two days, could they have teleported? Could they have flown? Could they have gone anywhere? Don't you don't situation. know what means of transit they have available to them now uh, if they wanted to make an escape. They did travel here by foot ostensibly, but um, whatever, however you're gonna get here, wherever they're going from here, who knows? Okay, thought, idea. Are you still holding the bird? <laughs> yeah. I'm caressing it, giving it seeds. What yeah. kind of bird is it? Um, it's, it's a finch. A finch. Um, well, what did Everett Freed look like when we last saw him? Uh, Christoph. It looked like Christoph. I mean, technically, no, but not anymore. No. He, had, he looked s sullen and pale and something yeah. like that. He was kind of a balding th uh, um, doctor with grave features and glasses. Here's an idea. Cast Animal Messenger. Go find a doctor that's bald with sullen gray features and tell him, we coming for you. And then I'm going to release the bird. Which way does he go? Um, with Animal Messenger, you have to specify both a location, which you must have visited, and a recipient who matches the general description. Oh, uh, a location. You, yeah. Oh, the woods. <laughs> the fo the yeah, the forest, the 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 Optinwald forest. 
So you whisper to a bird, you let go, we both <laughs> turn to you and we're like, so you're getting us out of here. So the yeah. bird leaves. Which way does it go? Goes into the trees and he- going towards the northwest. So we're waiting for somebody to come get us now. Now we play the waiting game. <laughs> and we'll be on our way to Altbrook soon. Because you know with the animal messenger, the messenger doesn't... The messenger only comes back <laughs> if it doesn't reach its destination. And it it's going to be gone for a while. Because um, I was hoping... Really relying could, on you here, Raph. We could see which way the bird went and it could maybe find where... Are you going to follow the bird? I feel like the and it's beyond the scope of Animal Messenger to divine the direction someone has gone. No, it's trying to hack Pulling it. In. Okay. Um, we're sitting for like an hour. The bird. Where you're talking no. to yeah, animals. Animal no, Messenger, you kind of have to send it. You kind of have to give it where it's supposed to go. Can we? Can we get to? Is is it within fifty miles of Altbrook? You have no way of knowing that. It, like, like you're not really giving the animal a specific location, or uh, you, uh, the the animal needs to be sent towards a specific location, yeah, not yeah. a general location. But what? Can but we what just if, go to Drakenheim? What if we? <laughs> can we? Can we send? Are we within fifty miles? Where uh, are our horses? You actually won't know that the spell doesn't let it's you find that homing. information out. No, it's but not, can I? Can I tell? Can I roughly get? Am I over less or more than fifty miles away from? Civilization. Oh, far more than fifty miles away. So the me- messenger will never make it. Probably, if, if you're trying to send the messenger to a city, it's not gonna. It's it, the, it, the duration of the spell will. Uh, um, I waste an hour talking to birds. <laughs> <laughs> I use a full hour, and I talk to about four or five different birds, and most of it is just so I can mark them off in my bird watching uh, book. Uh, I have a book, bird watching. Cool. I nailed it. I got some really. Some really rare ones. Nice. Um, it's only then that you realize that every bird you've spoken to, after it after it fluttered away, Bruce ate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it only made it out of sight, and then <laughs> Bruce just pounced on it. Wrap. <laughs> I think I need a new strategy. Okay, what about the original strategy of teleporting us? I know, I know what we can do. We will teleport to Emberwood Village. I will cherry. I will uh, carry us there upon the powers of Bruce. How many people can you teleport? And unlimited. Oh, great! Yeah, he opens a portal, oh. and everyone steps through it. We did have Emberwood. horses once upon a time. I, I feel like they're lost. They're lost. <laughs> they're gone. I named it. I took care yeah, of it. I, I left I, it in a stable. I, I think we wrote it for like one <laughs> one stretch. <laughs> You just left it like in someone's the, stable. The third time we've had horses that you've named, and then we've just abandoned yeah, some. It's yep. hard. It's hard. It's hard. Okay, traveling back to Emberwood Village through the teleportation spell, which is a perfect teleportation spell, by the way. There's no pulling at your guts. Mm-hmm. It's like very clean. Oh, so less fun. It's oh, wait. Who am I, Sebastian? No, Shh. you appreciate how good of a spell. <laughs> As you depart Emberwood Village after arriving there with teleportation, you happen upon a familiar dwarf. Wait, do we know? Yes, the dwarf that you briefly fought alongside and met for all of five minutes. You look familiar. Hey, we know you. <laughs> you, there. Am I coming up? Are you gonna move over? Where's your beard? Oh, uh, it's in the beard box. <laughs> Here, so we can get a beard box. What am I doing? Where, um, where Baldur, are they? Uh, um, you are in Emberwood Village, um, perhaps having stumbled away from the resurrection of Sebastian Crow after waiting several hours for that to work out. You decided to head back to the village for a drink, a much yeah. needed one. And you've been decompressing and are pondering heading back to report in with Eldrick and River yourself about the status of things. Yeah, because as far as I am as I know, he's still, that was a failure, right? I, or did I see him come back? You, I wasn't you, for... you departed knowing that the ritual was complete. 
your mission was was finished, and at that point, it was just a matter of time of of him waiting. waking up. Gotcha. So you're going to report uh, as you do. You know, you rested this, yourself in Emberwood Village, and you happen upon the king and these and the king's well-known bodyguards once once again. I recognize you. Your Majesty, how are you? Do I do I know you? I'm, I'm Baldric. I helped you defeat Trithesia. Oh! We turned them into a sloth. Yeah, sorry, you flew in as an eagle in the midst of combat. Uh, spells were flying, there was a dwarf I've never met running around, and I, then yeah. and then you disappeared with the dragon and two of our friends. I. We didn't even shake hands or exchange. We, this is the first thing I did was shake your hand. I said, nice to meet you, your majesty. Uh, you know what, it's fine. Um, did I'm you? glad to see that you made it out of the Octonwald in one piece. You I'm know so- what, in the midst of battle, we all forget things, no worries. There was a lot going on. I I'm, didn't I'm forget. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, random dwarf fellow. Um, it's a highlight for him. Baldric. <laughs> Baldric, right. The king meets a lot of people. <laughs> Names the king forever. actually just went through this very intense ritual where he had to s- take his own heart out of his body and stab it. So he is, um, his thoughts are elsewhere. Oh, that sounds like elven nonsense to me. <laughs> I'm glad that you're, I guess, in two pieces? One you piece, ju- where's your heart? How did you just know it was elven nonsense? That's incredible. Oh, well, I am a pretty high-ranking mage. What, uh, what brings you back here? What, what brings us back here? We... The birds failed us. We are now... Breath, you're so good with birds. I know, that's why I'm so disappointed. We look to seek the counsel of um, River. We head to Altbrook. We need the fastest way possible to, to Altbrook. And uh, we were hoping River and Eldrick could uh, poof us there. Oh, well. Uh, if it'll... Get you on your way, and me about my day, I can help poof you. You can poof us. I can <laughs> poof you. <laughs> uh, are, is That's it, magic for teleport. Well, yes. I was okay. just wondering. I wasn't quite sure. Um, I've been poofed before by Sebastian, and it was not pleasant. Is yours? Wrath's was actually quite pleasant. Well, I don't Where, think oh. his is the same one. I think his was No, his thing. was like a doorway. Yeah. Sebastian's is more of a... Mine's much more structured. It was like he opened a creepy cat door, and you stepped into it. Which yeah. was... But it was far better than being torn apart. Uh, you just had to endure all that meowing, and moving through the teleportation cat door kind of felt like getting... Like, you know that feeling of like when a cat brushes up behind your, your leg? Just that was the feeling of feel, filling your entire body as, as Wrath teleported you. Oh, yeah. I like yeah, to feel yeah. no uncomfortable feelings as we do this because I have felt very, varying uncomfortable feelings as we've been transported across this country. No being reduced to skeletons, no cat everything. Mm. Who have you been teleporting with? <laughs> cat Wrath? everything and skeleton Sebastian? wizard. Flavor. Okay. Salt flavor. Yeah. And they say they're high ranking as well, so I'm just thinking it's an overall teleportation thing. Are we all going to like you cannot bend explode or time and space without a little uncomfortableness? Well you can though. <laughs> <laughs> There's always it's, a little it's not a prerequisite to <laughs> oh, feel uncomfortable yeah. or be have your flesh ripped off of you know what? Let's uh where, where do you need to go? Actually, more pressingly, what happened? Last we saw the dragon taken away as a sloth. Mm. Mm. And yes. we wonder because Corbin, who I assume is with us too. Um, my son. Yeah, he, he had made a pact with the dragon Trithesia, although is she still alive? He seems to continue when he shouldn't remain if Trethesia is destroyed. So it's just, does Trethesia live? That's a good question. Uh, what did, what happened? My, my understanding, Monty, of that spell is that I would not have known that 
Eventide came back, right? My understanding would be that Trithesio was sacrificed completely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, Trithesio is... She's... They're gone. They completely destroyed, consumed by the spell that... Yeah, you saw all the blood drained out yeah. of Trithesio's body and then used to flow through Sebastian's body. Yeah, that... Anything left of that dragon is within Sebastian. So Sebastian is the new patron of Corvin. It could work like that. If possibly that essence was transferred, maybe. But it's kind of sorceries outside yeah. of my... It could be the reason why he lives. Understand. So is Sebastian back? He should be. I haven't confirmed it in the flesh, but the ritual was completed. Uh, and it's, you know, it's only a matter of time until he's moving among the earth again. Well, I wish we had more time, but right now we are on an urgent chase to find Everett freed. Did, did we not, did we not kill Everett freed when I first met you? No, no, he got, he got away. Okay. <laughs> you don't have well, a way of tracking him, do you? I imagine I don't. Well, turns out you do. Okay. You um, and several others at the Academy would have access to the scrying spell. Mm, right. Which you don't have the necessary material because the scrying... You need a I crystal need ball or a mirror that is prepared to use as a scrying surface. So it's not just a spell you can cast, you need the material mm -hmm. component. But you do have, for, you could potentially use scrying to try to spy on Everett Freed. It w might not necessarily give you their location because it shows you where they are, like shows you like, just looking at them. Yeah. But you might be able to use that to, deter de to determine where they are. Baldrick, I have a task for you. If you're available, it would be to help the nation. Well, if it's to help the nation, I suppose I can carve out some time. Well, it's actually two favors. First of all, I need uh, you to get us to poof us to Altbrook. Mm. Second of all, after getting us to Altbrook, I need you to use your magic to spy on Everett Freed and relay any information you're able to gather to us. All right, that's doable. You need to come to Altbrook with you. Okay. Uh, for how long do you need me to spy on Everett? Do you just need to know where he is now? I would like to know where he is holed up. Like, yeah, okay. Hold up, but maybe where he's going would be, because he might stop and be in the middle of the forest right now, but we need to know where he's headed. Any information you can gather on where he plans to set up his base of operations next? Okay. I can do that, I think. Sure. Alright, so... We're teleporting you to... Altbrook. Which is somewhere you had been before? Yeah, I imagine. That uh, so, I don't there's see There's even the a need... teleportation circle there, isn't there? In Altbrook. Mm. There's not. There's not, okay. Well, there's not, but... Um, I'll Unless just I said the... before, but you can get them to Alpha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So then I, I'm i just going to cast the teleportation spell. Yeah. All right. And we'll travel to Altbrook. Does it feel uncomfortable? And, uh, it feels like... You ever have creme brulee? Yeah. Okay. It feels like when you have a creme brulee and you tap through the caramelized sugar on top and you have that little crack and then your spoon just easily glides through. And that's what you feel as you go through my teleport. Something's spell. wrong. <laughs> and it goes, whoop, I don't and think it just... worked. <laughs> this is delicious. That was so pleasant. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why it's weird. And you just step, and now we're in Oprah. And you have a delicious, sweet, custard taste. taste in your mouth. <laughs> what sorcery is this? <laughs> It's not Do you sorcery. Want to go sorcery. With us on the rest of our. Am I all here? No, I'm sure you're busy. Well, I guess I'm busy scrying on Everett Freed. Is it? Uh, yes. 
Okay. Um, so I imagine there's some place in Altbrook where I can find. Uh, like I know it well enough. Like there's. Yeah. The the. Whip up a ball. Do you need his stuff? Because he has a whole office. I should. I don't even know the spell. So well, I mean, I know. I. The Kyle know the, the best spell. the best way to get all that together. Um, I think that we can. The best place to actually find those kind of influence that you need to cast the spell probably would be the Duke's Palace. Okay. Uh, and also because Eldrick and River are there, mm -hmm. and they might have the materials, because Eldrick, you know Eldrick, he does a lot of scrying. Um, it's kind of one of his, his deals. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Between Eldrick and I, we can... Yeah. Pinpoint. And see if you can f figure out where they are. Yeah. So, the two of you... So the group of you return to the palace of Malkador Engelhart, the Duke of Altbrook, with everyone in, in tow. The attendants arrive, pronounce the arrival of the king, and the apothecaries that were with you and the students they depart. But Corbin will stay with you for the time being, Rudy. Mm. Uh, and we can pass off the body to like one of the attendants so that they can prepare the body yes, the, before the Duke sees. Yeah. As you arrive at the palace, what would you would you like to handle this of this with Eldrick and River first? Because I feel like that's the most important information that you guys want right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Baldric, you are able to meet up with Eldrick the old wizard, who also has an equally impressive beard, commends you and says, Baldric, I feel like we should have had you involved in all of this far, far sooner. <laughs> you have you've moved things around so quickly and so efficiently. Uh, I, I am with, without words. Sometimes it can feel like working with Sebastian and the Wrath are very capable, but the, effic the dwarven efficiency that you bring to this has been a mu much welcome change. Uh, time is valuable. I thank you for your words, Alt. Uh, oh my god. My Eldrick. Speech. Eldrick. Thank you, Eldrick. I do our best. See, names are hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am remiss. Uh, um, I understand that the king wishes to locate this Everett Freed. Mm. I can provide you with with my crystal ball for this purpose if you wish to cast the spell. You ha you have met Everett Freed before and, and fought with, with them. Mm. Do you happen to have anything that you have taken from Everett Freed? Any item or a body part or anything else that or you might have had? perhaps an entire corpse in a bag. We have a corpse that he occupied once. That may just do it. Well, we also have his office down at the university. Well, and wasn't there something in his eye socket when you? Yeah, there was the parts from inside the brain, the the brain cavity of Christoph Engelhart. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Let's use these as a focus for the spell, and that will make it more likely to locate him. Okay. You take the crystal ball and the components that Everett Fried installed in Christoph Engelhart's head. I get a saving throw, but I have a minus 10 penalty on this. Mm -hmm. What is your spell saving throw, DC? Here, here. Oh, sorry, 18. Okay. The scene before you appears to be a rumbling wagon uncovered pulled by some sort of animated bear or animal or elk that Everett Freed has reanimated. Freed and Cena Rinks are sitting in the wagon. The rest of the wagon is covered and strapped over with what material they could salvage. There's a look of desperation on both of their faces. <clears throat> but the creature that Freed has Create, and you see Freed in his original body. Oh. Um, and sort of stitched back together. The creature that Freed has created is pulling the wagon at incredible speed. And the wagon hurtling through 
the Octonwald is hurtling through the Octonwald forest, just at the place it meets the Elvenmire wetlands, which indicates they're moving real fast. Whatever thing he's built built is moving this at like probably a hundred miles an hour. And f- you hear Freed Freed say, "Won't be long now before." We'll get to Castle Sodden. I have been providing the Duke with soldiers for some time now. He'll take us in. Once I get there, you must head. And he, he says, Cena, you must head to the bay. The creature must have gone there. And Cena says, do not know if I can control it anymore, Freed. Bringing it back to life was a huge mistake. And he says, I know that! But it's the only thing that we can do, do now. Either that or we have to lay low for years. All of our work lost. The king will bring wrath down upon us. He will destroy everything that we have done. And that is when the spell ends. No, they can all see this. No, you have to oh, relay that to them, I but you can't. Okay, yeah. so. Uh, and where is it they were going? He was heading to the castle? Castle uh, Sodden. Castle Sodden. Which I know. Okay. But you can... Yeah, so. All right. So I finished the spell. David Freed. He has created some gargantuan monstrosity that carries him to Castle Sutton. That is his current destination. Mm. He's traveling quite quickly. I don't know how long until he will be there, Mm. but that's his next destination. He seems distraught. Good. Not about, well, about you, your majesty, but he also seems afraid of something that he's reanimated that's now grown beyond his control. Mm. And they, they said they were going to a bay? Cena Rinks, Cena Rinks is said that she was going to Ash Bay to Ash because bay. she believes that's where the creature that they resurrected has gone, right. but that is now beyond their control. Gotcha. So, not only do we know where Effort Freed is, thank you, Baldrick. My pleasure. I hope you don't need me for anything. I don't want to be involved in any more of this. <laughs> you're already involved. <laughs> yeah, you're in it now. Baldrick, we'll see you at Ash Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. That's not really up to me. Uh, for now, I won't ask anything more of you. You've been most helpful and we now know where our enemy is, and we know where the Duchess's body is. Although I guess we can't call it the Duchess's body anymore. It's now just the Duchess reanimated. Mm. It sounds like it's uh, it's gone off on its own. We thought maybe someone else had taken it or something, but oh, no. it looks like it's just... Who knows what kind of damage it's doing on the way. And it's possible that it's returned to its reef. The Academy's supposed to have people there securing the lighthouse. So we're going to have to look into that. But Everett Freed is heading to Toddsville. And we will be too shortly. Do we attempt to intervene, cut him off? I'd say with us now being an Altbrook and them being already on the way to Toddsfeld, I don't think there's much of, much of a chance of us cutting them off. Mm. But if they're in Castle Sodden, we will surround that castle. And we will drive them out. Did you tell us about the soldiers? I did. He told you everything I, yeah. he saw. Okay. Yeah. That changes the game of going to see Toddsfeld. We don't know now what to expect unless we're hearing from the records group that we sent in. We know something of what to expect. We know that 
Uh, von Fritz may have an army of undead monstrosities mm -hmm. to challenge us with. It may not be regular soldiers, it might be similar to the creatures that we faced in the swamp, meaning that we need all the support we can get. Rudy, I believe Rickard and yourself were looking into the Octonwald Irregulars. We have the Steel Fangs. We have, hopefully, the support of the Jacksons. We... Do you need anything more from Baldric? Baldric? Good luck. Yeah, thanks. You don't have, they don't have any rings of spell storing or anything. Not yeah, no yeah. one, no one here? You do? Yeah, load me up. All right, what, uh, what would you like there, Wrath? Anything level five. Right, what's something cool that you don't have? Are you at level five on your rings or it's more? Not fixed Tell I mean, maybe I can so. eventually get more, but right now I've, uh, You're just that bad. I haven't Thank been back might. to the academy for my, uh, for my ceremony. What's a bastion at? I just like seven. For what? Rings. Technically, yeah, he has seven rings. Give him Wall of Force. Wall of Force? Okay. Boom. You know what? Yeah. You can have, yeah. I'll, I load him up with Wall of Force. I wish you all good luck. You'll need it. Maybe we'll see you again. I hope so. Do you? I hope under better circumstances than this. And when I said, I, I hope that you make it through whatever you're doing next. <laughs> and I hope. Oh, we'll see, you <laughs> see you at Ashen Bay. See you at Ashen Bay. Big applause for Baldrick. Okay. With this information in hand, a room is prepared in the Duke's palace for you to, you are all able to recuperate and a meeting room is prepared where Eldrick and Elias Drexel and River and anyone else that you want to call in are present to decide your next move. Is there anybody else? Is there like Rickards in Tottsfeld? As as Last you heard, yes. As Although, if there's any news from Rickard, the person to ask about that would probably be El would probably be Elias Drexel. So Elias, Eldrick, River. Yeah. Um, any Caspians still around? Again, probably Elias Drexel is the one you want to talk to about updates for all this. Okay. Yeah. Then I suppose that's everyone. Okay. These, a small meeting room is put together with, and as you step into it, some of the attendants bring some refreshments and Elias Drexel unravels a map of Westamar and debriefs the situation. It's been some time since we've discussed where we stand, your majesty. And it's important that we keep our eye on the prize. I have prepared a short summary of our strategic position at this time and what is known to us about both our allies and our enemies. If you wish, I would like to share it now. By all means, Elias. Very good. To begin with our, with the situation at hand. It has been several months now since our last meeting with the Illyrians in Liberio, where we agreed you would have three months to secure the allegiances of all the Dukes, lest the Illyrians take matters into their own hands regarding Drakenheim. We have now secured the loyalty of all the Dukes of Westamar, save Ludwig von Fritz. This is where immediately now the situation begins to unravel. A call has gone out from Ludwig von Fritz formally denouncing your rule. And Ludwig von Fritz has assembled several lesser nobles, including Boris the Bold of Leuchten, to join his forces in opposition to you. There are currently about, 
by my count, about a dozen lesser houses which have signed on with him. But Helig and Geldstadt, Altbrook, and Dransmond all seem to hold steady with us. I'm also hearing reports that Von Fritz has secured some kind of additional mercenary assets, perhaps purchased from the Amethyst Academy. Hmm. Seems to be some form of, people are saying, construct soldiers, others are saying undead soldiers. The reports are varied. If they are from the Academy, would that imply that the Academy stands against us? No, it would not. Under the Edicts of Lumen, the Amethyst Academy is not allowed to refuse its mercantile services to any noble household. Mm. Which means that even in the case of a civil war, a erstwhile house who is able to afford the services of the Amethyst Academy is still able to purchase it. It is not uncommon for, even in the wars that have been fought between Illyria, Caspia, and Westamar, for the Academy to be providing material support to both sides simultaneously. That is their advantageous position under, under the neutrality that the Edicts of Lumen grant them. They, have to, they, they can't say no to that business. Now that wouldn't be the soldiers that we heard or might be given by Everett Freed, would it? I haven't had enough intelligence to make an assessment on that. I'm just getting these reports from my scouts in the field. All I know is that Von Fritz has assembled forces that haven't been mustered in Westamar since the Civil War. Nevertheless, I have heard back from Rickard Steelfang, who has made contact with your old regiment, the Ochtenwalder Regulars. Yes? Yes. Apparently, Von Fritz had apprehended several of the Irregulars some months ago. Mm-hmm and ones that were still at large and managed to arrange a breakout before Von Fritz was able to execute them. The Steel Fangs and the Irregulars now both stand ready and I have given them the orders to begin mustering in preparation for whatever you would have them do. Your Majesty, the two most feared mercenary regiments in Westamar march under your banner. That is to our benefit. Both the Steel Fangs and the Octowald Irregulars, specifically the Irregulars, will strike fear in Von Fritz. Simultaneously, I've heard from Valentin Von Baden. The Von Badens have an impressive navy which makes them less than useful in a land conflict. Nevertheless, Von Baden has stripped several of his ships of their artillery and has offered to offered the, these weapons to us on land. That is a gracious gift, and we should accept all gifts graciously. Is that a rule? That is a rule, actually, yes. The engagement with Von Fritz means that the forces of Geldstadt and Helig are too far to send their forces in time, if you wish to confront them. I have heard about the status of the Duke Engelhardt's son, and I am uncertain about asking the Duke for military resources at this time. I understand. With... I wish circumstances had been different with Kristoff, but the what we can tell Duke Engelhart is that the man responsible for the death of his son is heading to Toddsfeld, and that we will see justice is served to him. In the meantime, catching up with some of our older allies, the Caspian forces are still at large and have been deployed to monitor the status of the Illyrian forces that are here. Mm. My understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that if everything is aligned, that 
the Illyrian forces and the Caspian forces will then be joining our own for some sort of military operation on Drakenheim itself. Once we are done with Toddsfeld and have uh, dealt with whatever the situation is with Everett Freed's abomination that he has created from the Duchess, then our next step is to head to Drakenheim and put an end to this once and for all as a unified force. Meanwhile, the the number of pilgrims that the that Lucretia Matthias has managed to recruit over late, we are seeing a massive increase in the number of individuals heading to Drakenheim as pilgrimage. And I worry that Lucretia Matthias herself has amassed effectively an army of her own. Mm. I worry what will have to happen with that. Nevertheless, I, am al I also understand that the Illyrians have asked for a update on how we are doing, and they have sent our old friend Ophelia Reed to join us and monitor the progress. This is going to be a dark time for what would, what would be a great nation being built up, but Toddsfeld stands between us and our goals, and so we need to show the Duke of Toddsfeld and those who stand with him why we are the rulers of Westmark. The only thing that concerns me at this stage is there is one who is completely unaccounted for, and that is your cousin. Not Sophia. Your other cousin. Katerina. For a long time she was an adversary as this Queen of Thieves, a mantle that she still seems to wear. I don't know what to make of it. It seems now would be the perfect time for her to play her hand. She has avoided everything, and now as things come to a head, I wonder whose side she'll end up on. I showed her kindness and empathy during her mother's funeral. She had an opportunity then to kill me and she didn't take it. There have been several assassination attempts on me since then, but we assumed it was her. But now those assumptions lie more with Everett Freed. What the Queen's play is, we don't know, but I will not condemn the last remaining Von Kessel other than myself, hmm. unless she moves against me. If Eld she does, though, it will be her folly. Eldrick adds, Elias, I would not necessarily say that there is no other enemy unaccounted for in the situation, for the Directorate has not been the most cooperative of late. And I, too, echo the concerns. A military operation like this would be the best time for our enemies to play their hands. At Wrath River, what do you think? I have not thought about the Directorate in some time. My focus lies elsewhere. The, the other threat is what now lives in Ashen Bay. And right. I This Duchess. I do not know what it is now. We had a difficult time with it the first time. If not for the help of the Illyrians, we would not have conquered it, but I guess it did not die. Well, it did die, it, but it, it got died. Brought, brought, <laughs> back it brought back when it was originally in the hands of the Academy. And it poses a threat to Westmar entirely. R River Shakespeare said, I can't help but feel responsible for that. We should have let the Illyrians destroy it. This is an, yet another lesson on why delirium 
needs to be destroyed because even in the hands of very capable people, it is still proven to become dangerous. I see three battles on our hands and they're going to happen one after another. We have to take on Toddsfeld. We have to put an end to the Duchess in Ash Bay and then we march on Drakenheim against Lucretia Matthias. All the while, the Queen of Thieves and the Directorate of the Academy will be working against us. But we do have assets. We have a strong military that is growing. We have the Caspians, we have the Hooded Lanterns, we have the Steel Fangs, we have um, the Octonwald Regulars. Not only that, but Sebastian Crow is rumored to have returned. Perhaps if we can get in touch with Pluto, Veo, and Sebastian, they can gather what information they can on the Academy Directorate. Perhaps we should put it on them to look into that matter and then meet us in Ash Bay after the attack on Toddsfeld. This may be our best opportunity. It would behoove our enemies in the Directorate, as well as Katarina, to dismantle your coalition before it can be completed. With the allies in, from Illyria and Caspia, as well as the United Front from Westmar itself, the forces that we could bring to bear on Drakenheim would be considerable, larger than even the forces that you had Elias, when you led your first attacks. Sebastian, Veo, and Paludo will need to make sure that the Directorate and the Queen of Thieves do not interfere in Toddsfeld. Because if they do, it, it's the perfect opportunity for them to do so. This is the moment when you are most vulnerable, Your Majesty. And who do you think is going to be the first one to move? Or the first one, the Queen, or... The directorate, who's more likely in this situation? Elias shakes his head. We have no way of knowing. Mm. We also have no way of knowing if they, if, if they might be working together or in league with one another. Mm. It is lucky then, in a way, that the folly of Sebastian Crow might actually benefit us here. Sebastian Crow has a soft spot for the Queen of Thieves and mm. is directly linked to the Academy directors. Mm -hmm. It just so happens that the thorns in his side, I think the Queen of Thieves has just as much of a blind spot for Sebastian Crow. She eagerly attempts to manipulate him every turn she gets. So with Sebastian Crow hunting her and trying to gain an awareness on the Academy, they will both be aware of Sebastian Crow and that might divert their attention away from us. But the question is, is he willing to step up do what he needs to do with the Queen of Thieves. We haven't seen him do that yet. I don't know, but it isn't whether he does what he needs to do, it's whether or not he can divert them, even unintentionally. If he fails in bringing the Queen of Thieves to justice or bringing her in, he at the very least will be annoying and keep her attention on him. I have never seen any student more successfully fail like Sebastian Crow. We can agree on that. So. Except for perhaps. Um, 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 <laughs> thank you. President, President. Very well. I, I will convey, I will try to find out what has happened with Sebastian Veo and Pluto and brief them on their objectives. Confronting the Queen of Thieves and the Directorate may be more than they can handle on their own, but they can certainly prevent that. I do believe that they can certainly prevent them from interfering at least with what you need to accomplish in Toddsfeld, Your Majesty. And Elias, if you can convey, please, that I would like the Queen of Thieves brought in alive. Very well. That leaves us now to decide what to do about Toddsfeld. Well, we have the Octonwald Irregulars who Indeed. have been secured. Indeed. There are a few that were part of that mission that managed to escape, that I feel would ma make quite capable field operative, operatives. The Irregulars are very talented. They are a rowdy bunch, but they got skills like none I've ever seen. 
You said that the Irregulars were being held captive and that a group went into the castle and rescued them. That is what the reports say, yes. Some of their number went in and, and brought them out. I think that a group of mercenaries being on the front lines to do secret operative missions is important, but could we please reach out to one of the members at least to join us? Rudy will be by my side during the attack. If we could get one of the Octonwald to give us a layout of the inside of the castle, perhaps anything that they know about weak spots or or points of interest, how they were able to break in, how they were able to free their own people, it, it might give us an inside, some inside information. Very well. I will send for one of the, the ones that managed to break the other irregulars out, and I will have them attached directly to your service, my, your majesty. Thank you. With that in mind, Rudy, I do believe that it is appropriate that you also be given some form of formal command. It seems to me like your, though Veo has taken up the mantle of the Lord Commander, it feels to me like your experience, well, if I may speak candidly, Rudy has been at your side as a commander and warrior for some time, Your Majesty, and I do feel perhaps that recognizing that in some way, and especially if her unit will be called back up, she deserves some some form of command or rank. I've been thinking about this, and Rudy, one thing I know for you is the only reason I didn't give you Lord Commander is because I know that when this is all done, I don't see you wanting to stick around in the castle being sworn to serve out what days you have left. Serving me when you could spend it with your family. I know that the, fam the family is the most important thing to you, but until such a time as you are dismissed, I wanted to elect you as my king guard. King guard. That's, that's so, that's very generous. I, I think if I, if I can help in any way, I'd be honored to do so. And I'll be honest, if, if I can make it out of this and get to my family at the end, then I will consider myself to be very lucky, but I will do my best to serve the crown in the meantime. Consider, consider it then, Rudy, that the all that I ask of you is that you stick by my side until such a time that we put a rest to the issues in Drakenheim. Once I am crowned king and delirium, the delirium situation is handled, you are not in my service anymore. I, obviously, you're still always going to be a valued friend and your family to me. So you will always be welcome in whatever kingdom I rule over in any position you wish to serve. But if you just wish to return to your family, I won't hold you to that. But for the time being, the Archenwald Irregulars, that name will strike fear into the hearts of those in Toddsfeld. But I think to rename them the Kingsguard and have you be the head of them would be appropriate. Yeah. What, what do you think, Elias? You know, Rudy, during the war, I adopted Ansem and Petra. <sighs> because I wanted to give them a family. And I realized that I've always treated my own children like subordinates and not like children. <sighs> I've let these wars consume my family and I know that they've consumed yours as well. <sighs> I think, uh, as much as you've given, definitely deserve that retirement. <laughs> you know what, Elias, I think, I think we both do, and mm. I'm hoping and praying to the old gods that we can make it through this and end up there. You're a damn good soldier. One of the best warriors I've ever seen. The enemies of the king 
will breathe easy when you retire. Mm. Well, we'll get to that spot eventually, but until then, we ain't gonna let them have a relaxed moment until we're done this. Is there anything we can give Rudy? Like a Kingsguard brooch or, I don't know. She, she could probably, you, have you? Well, there is one thing that you could actually do if you wanted to. Um, you, Rudy herself likes wearing her colors. She has a family color. You could, she's lived in Tearhaven for some time. You could make her the Baroness of Tearhaven. I mean... <laughs> Consider it done. <laughs> Baroness? I'm no fancy noble. You were already the sheriff. You already looked after that community. The only requirements of you are that when you do go back, you continue to look after the community. All right, I think I can, I can do that. And you got a cool flag in your colors. Uh-oh. Yes, we'll have to have the heralds design a crest for you. You can, whatever, whatever, whatever great beast you feel you've slain. I would probably say it's more wolfish than anything. Like oh, right. Less slain, more representing a wolf. My household. Are there any, are there any households represented by a wolf currently? Currently, we got a sailing ship, a boarhead, an eagle, a stag, a bridge, a bull, a bear. We actually don't have a wolf. There you go. The what red... about a wolf with crossed axes behind it? Ooh. I mean, oh. On a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, that sounds right to me. Great. I mean, we have probably enough money you could build a little castle, too. Yeah, do you want a bigger <laughs> house? Your house is beautiful, but we could... um. Just, just, to, just to kind of like... Zhuzh it up a bit. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, if I could build a space where my family can feel they can come back and be safe, then that's all I ask. Consider it done. Well, here's to House Whitaker. To House Whitaker. Oh! Oh! No, it's more. Oh! Oh! There you go. Remember, you're uh, kind of uh, unofficially part of that house as well. Thank you, Baroness. I'm not going to get used to that. <laughs> the no, King's no, no. Barn. Just you call have to me Rudy. The King's Barn where he can sleep. When, he's, when he visits. Yeah, when I visit, I expect a, I still... A, a, a stash of hay. Space. A loft of hay. <laughs> so, I guess, beyond this, I know that you wear your colors, but can we can we get her, like, a, a nice shiny set of armor or something? Certainly. It doesn't need to be, like, better than her current armor, just shiny. Right? You know, I'm only going to get it stained and... <sighs> Wrote guts and yes. I wouldn't worry too much about it being shiny. Cause In the cool. Battle of Todd's felt you will, but when we march up there, I want them to be able to what see. What kind of armor do you have right now? I have uh, half mithril half plate. Okay. Uh, I don't think it would be out of the realm of possibility for a, uh, a fine suit of uh, full plate. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Can it be... remain mithril? It. It could be magical. It could be academy purchased. A plus one pseudo full plate. The only thing is my mithril half plate does give me uh, no disadvantage on my stealth. It's going to be the trade-off. We don't need you to be stealthy in the, th- in the things that are upcoming. I assure you. Let me see. Unless you want to come in, like, Ooh. where I imagine... Are you on like the field of battle, or do you, do you break into the the keep of of Todd's Fall? And, and, and we and we keep both handy, and we can we yeah. can yeah. Decide, you can decide, on decide on the day. Decide on the day. <laughs> you have your yeah, stealth yeah. armor, and you have your yeah. battle armor. Yeah. Okay. Very well then. I will muster up what local forces of the lanterns and any houses of that are willing to aid us. We will give the Duke of Toddsfeld a show of force. How would you like to approach it, Your Majesty? 
Shall we simply march on Todsfeld? And surround the city? If I may. We wish to keep Todsfeld intact. It is a prosperous place. It has many uses. We cut the head off the snake. The truth of the matter is, is that since the destruction of Todsfeld Dam, the city itself is completely indefensible. There is no wall protecting the city proper, which is why Castle Sodden, on the other hand, lies just outside the city. It is surrounded by a deep moat in the midst of the swamps, and its walls and other defenses are quite impressive. It will bear quite a siege. If Ludwig von Fritz has indeed augmented his forces with soldiers of some kind, it will be, he could potentially hold out in that castle for some time, unless attacked from the air or from underground. My plan then. First, we will sh do a show of force. I think it's important that the three of us are visible when we call out for the Duke to surrender. I already imagine that he will refuse, but with the intel gathered from the Ochtenwald Irregulars, once the refusal that we assume will happen comes, we remain surrounding the castle with our forces. Meanwhile, a small strike force consisting of myself, Rudy, Wrath, and anybody else who joins us. If the Ochtenwald Irregulars can tell us how they got into the castle last time, we might be able to use a similar method to infiltrate, find the head of the snake, defeat it, as well as Everett Freed. Gather every, any information we can on Everett Freed's ongoings. And after defeating Duke von Fritz and Everett Freed, we occupy the castle. Once we're in and we've defeated them, we will open the gates and allow our forces in. And we will claim Todsfeld as our own. Now, is there anything to be said about the city where we might be getting forces that are hidden there? I'm just thinking that, that might not be the only place where forces are. I think if we can get some of the hooded lanterns and the Caspians mm -hmm. to occupy the city of Todsfeld, make sure that the civilians are safe, make sure that they are moved into locations that protect them from any battles that might happen. We don't want any accidents to cause unneeded casualties. Very well. As you continue the planning stages, you are interrupted as the Duke Malkador Engelhart enters the meeting room. The aged Duke is a little shaken as he steps into the room, but he comes up to you, Wilhelm, and bows deeply and says, Your Majesty, thank you for bringing back my son. Put a hand on his shoulder and I lower my head and, and, I, and I say, Duke Engelhardt, I'm so sorry. We did everything we could, and we are going after the person responsible for this. And we will see that they are brought to justice. I know my son isn't a great and powerful wizard like Sebastian Crow, but it is if it is within any of your power, your majesty, to find a way to bring my son back. It would mean the world to me. We really got that route of resurrection. There's a lot we missed on that dragon thing. Well, I mean, if we can hunt down Everett Free, maybe we can somehow get information out of him. The person responsible, Everett Freed, was a scientist who used your son in his own experiments. The first thing on my list is to capture Everett Freed, and before we bring him to justice, we see if he's willing to trade his life 
if he's able to undo what he did to your son. He will, of course, be put in prison. I imagine once we occupy Toddsfeld, Toddsfeld prison might be a great place for him. It's terrible. Uh, those, those dungeons are pretty horrible. So we can lock him up there for the rest of his days, but he'll have his life. And with that, if he manages to bring your son back, then that's great. If not, if we were able to bring Sebastian Crow back, perhaps there are other magics out there that we could use to save your son. And I will see what I can do. He nods. Un understood, Your Majesty. I, I know it's, it doesn't seem like it's a priority to you, but... It would mean a lot to my family. My son wasn't always the most level-headed or responsible boy, but I love him very deeply. I will not stop until Everett Freed pays either by bringing your son back or with his own life. I just thought that with all the between the flame keepers or or maybe with with respect to your majesty i don't think that that man is going to bring my son back eldrick river what options do we have i i know that sebastian crow required a dragon this is not sebastian crow perhaps an owl bear barring contingencies that are meant for you your majesty it would require commissioning a flame keeper. The boy has been... I am not certain if how long the boy has been dead by anyone's estimation. The condition of the body is strange. It might be beyond the capabilities of, say, a flame keeper, even like Ophelia Reed, to raise the boy. The brain was removed from the body. Thus, it would require a powerful resurrection spell to bring him back. That would mean that the only two that I know of that are capable of such magic are the Divine Matriarch and Lucretia Matthias. These are assumptions. Ophelia Reed is to meet us. Yes. Perhaps we can get Ophelia to look at the body and... Well, at least see if there's anything that can be done. If not... We need to get an estimate. Then we can get an estimate on what it would require. Duke, I don't believe Lucretia Matthias is going to be helping us anytime soon. We have made an enemy of her. If Ophelia Reed cannot, then that leaves the Divine Matriarch, where in my hopeful alliance that I'm forging with Illyria, perhaps one of my requests be the resurrection of your son by the Divine Matriarch. I understand, Your Majesty. But it will be on my mind, and I will make sure that we are taking the steps towards securing your household. Thank you. I'll leave you to your war planning. Thank you, Duke. He departs. I do not like that. But there's nothing else that we can do. Unless we find another scroll of resurrection. Will, will the scroll even work? It, it has a time limit on it, doesn't it? It's possible that it would. But... With three, I, I can't... Uh, I, I can't in good conscience recommend use it. Sebastian Crow was one thing. But the Duke's... The Duke's... <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> no the Duke's one son is a difficult prospect to use such a valuable asset upon. There are means to bring people back. I owe it to the Duke to try, but the scroll was a gift to the Von Kessel family to help yes. in the need of resurrecting the king and with three upcoming wars at our doorstep <laughs> i'd like 
Probably good to have. I, I, I agree. I agree. It is. Do we still have that scroll that that didn't work on Sebastian? It didn't work yes. on Sebastian. It still could work on me. Good. Sebastian refused to use it, mm. and so Matt, Wrath and Eldrick and River were able to not have the magic expended. Mm. So the st- scroll is still good. Whew. As far as I'm concerned, that scroll isn't just for me. It's for any of the people in the small council, we'll call it, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of the king. Should any of us die, hopefully we don't have to go through any situation like Sebastian Crow again, where we take weeks out of our lives to go hunting dragons. I mean, that kind of worked out. It did did work out. Especially for the money. You got a lot of money. (laughs) It's true. Uh, By the way, Elias, uh, we have unlimited funding now, thanks to a dragon horde. Are you serious? Yes. all right then, that changes many things. <laughs> we should probably we probably yeah. should have started. Just with keep that. writing down zeros until your arm gets tired. Yeah, we got a lot of money. Uh, so with that money, um, we Do might we need show? to send. Uh, sorry. We we put some in a. Yeah, we tip over the bag of holding <laughs> and like gold just spills out. <laughs> That's what gold sounds like. <laughs> that's it. There's Chalices the gems. And, There's like, the... and like, that's the sound of several of our problems vanishing. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it sounds like, too. It's yeah, not great at sound effects. No, you're. <laughs> the, I, it's perfect. Oh, this, um, is, this is good news. Nothing like a dragon horde to found a kingdom on. The way that I see it is, Trefessia was hoarding most of the gold of Westmar. It's technically yours. I mean. Like, it was stolen from somewhere, right? Mm. You, you don't just find gold. Gold isn't naturally occurring. River picks these coins up. These were minted by the Sorcerer Kings. How long did the dragon have these? Does that make them worth more? Yes and no. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's a f- well, actually, the Sorcerer Kings, mo- m- many of their coins during their reign were made of electum, not just gold. So technically, some of the coins are worth less than a gold coin, but there's more of them. Mm. But in in any case, these coin, the, this this is. I know the directorate is a, potentially our enemy, but the services of the academy are still available to you. They dare not refuse these these things. Without giving up the game. In that case, Elias. While we march to Toddsfeld, would you be able to use l- literally as much of this gold as you want to hire us to, to gain any assets you can from the Academy, whether that be magical blades for our warriors, magical arrows for our archers, perhaps Certainly. construct soldiers to march on the gates of Toddsfeld or to use in the upcoming battles? That might be an interesting angle that you propose that. Someone has been buying these construct soldiers. What if we simply ask for some of our own? What if we outbid our contenders? That's a difficult prospect. The Traditionally, the Academy is not supposed to give discounts or price differences to anybody. And so any of our services are available on a first come first serve basis. What this means is that if the sub, if, it, Oftentimes in the past, what has happened with the Academy, and one of the strategies that pre- predecessors have taken with this, is that if there was a, if you were planning, if you knew a war was upcoming, you could book the Academy out. Mm. And so all of our resources were already purchased because an, a large order had been made. And so because the order had been made, services weren't available to your enemy. Mm. In that case, Elias, I know that the constructs are already being purchased by another party. Buy out everything else the Academy has to offer so they cannot supply anybody else with goods for at least the next couple months. Add to cart over (laughs) and over and (laughs) over. Just keep Filling. Keep it in the cart so that way they cannot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Check out. Takes it out of the inventory. They have explosives, I believe. Maybe oh, some yes. digging tools that we can tunnel underneath. Yeah. 
Well, Probably all of it. Just Something that can though. help us fly over the walls. Potions of flying, potions of invisibility, explosives, uh, magical weapons, magical arrows, magical armor, outfit as much of our crew as we can in magical gear. I will, River and I will return to you with a full selection of what we can provide with this money. Great. It's going to be a lot, but... No, I don't want to blow the whole budget. We need to (laughs) also, you know, rebuild Westamar. And we have another vault gold for that. Well, we have vault gold and this, what we just poured out of Rath's bag of holding is maybe one quarter of the amount that we have. A quarter? <laughs> uh, yes, the rest of it's still in the hoard. We need couldn't to send- Couldn't carry it all. And we couldn't carry so it all. Heavy. There is a dragon there, but we've showed them a thing or two. Impressive. This will allow us to make sure that our soldiers are paid and fed. That is also most important. Excellent. Vale will be happy. <laughs> So, she will. To, to surmise, the next stage from here, you march on Toddsfeld to Castle Sodden, reconnecting with the Arctonwald Irregulars and the Steel Fangs, as well as the Hooded Lanterns, and perhaps a few read along the way. The march to Toddsfeld will be a few weeks. But with the word dispatched to the Illyrians that the final uniting of the nation is happening, they stay there, they may stay their approach. The only matter at hand that remains is when you plan to crown yourself. For the crown of Westamar is the last asset that you've left on the table. The seals still are mostly all accounted for, except for the, the, the one relic of St. Vitruvio that is still in Lucretia Matthias's possession. Well, I think next time we're in Drakenheim, but I, don't, I think right now marching on Toddsfeld is the most important. Okay. Uh, we don't want Everett Free to slip through our fingers. We know where he's going. And we have our forces gathered. I think we just got to march on Toddsfeld. But the question after that is whether we go straight to Ash Bay or if we go to Drakenheim to crown me. Mm. Mm. Well, a lot will be happening. But I am very excited to see what happens next week when a very special guest will be joining us for the next couple weeks to play with us. Keep that a little bit of a surprise for another week to see. But next week we will be joined by a a good friend of ours who will be playing with us for the next couple weeks of games uh, as we have a four-player party for the next little while as we go into battle in Toddsfeld. (laughs) Great. And I think that that's a great, uh, with, with all that recapped, I think that that is a great place to wrap things up, unless there are any other hanging threads that the three of you would like to address before we end. I mean, I guess my son. <laughs> I brought him along. <laughs> yeah, what do you want to do with Corbin? Uh, I guess is there a safe spot in the academy that he can hang out until this is all over? He says, he, he thinks about it and says, I I need to figure out what's happened. But until then, I don't want to make any more mistakes. I think I'm just going to go home for the next little while to Tearhaven and think about things. I mean, if you, that's what you want to do, that's up to you. Question is, do you want to go to Tearhaven or do you want to go where the rest of the family's at? I don't really want Dad to know what happened. Can we wait to tell him? Again, that's your choice. It's your news to tell him. If you don't want to, that's on you. But you know your family's here to support you no matter what. Yeah, I do. You need some alone time, you, you take it. You just... 
make sure you protect yourself. If you want to take that time, you want to go home, do whatever you can to make sure that no one's going to bother you. And if you need help, mm. we can give you the resource to be able to contact us. River says, if you want to go to Paradox Castle, if you want to learn, the door's always open. And Corbin says, I think I've had enough of school for a while. <laughs> All right. But again, go there. Maybe look after the place while we're gone. I will. And try not to get in any more trouble. I guess our family is going to need a, a court mage. Oh, I guess we do. <gasps> Perfect. Woo! Since... I'm not really going to be able to be House Whitaker, am I? Because I'm mageborn. I mean, it's very questionable because I think much of our family is uh, technically mageborn. Uh, Wait, so, aren't you? So. <laughs> no, you're no, you're you're a dabbler. That doesn't count. You're fine. Yeah, Rudy's like very much as far as you can go without being <laughs> considered. Um, listen. We'll who, figure it. Who knows how, how things are going to go after all this shakes out. But for now, you are welcome to be our court. This is weird to say. I, we're, in, we're. You could do like a, a an advanced training program, like a, a expedited training program through the academy, and then he can become the yeah. uh, the academy member in. Uh... It is super common for you. You even met earlier, um, at uh, at in. Um, Geldstadt. It is very common for family, for noble families that have mage-born children, that their own children are their court mages, because it allows at least their children to still mm -hmm. live with the family and have a have that sort of experience, right? So, um, I like Corbin, your court mage. All right. <laughs> Again, still getting used to the idea of having a court in general, but we'll get there one day and I think that's a good place to wrap things up thank you as always to our amazing cast Jill Kelly and Joe for playing and a big thank you to Kyle for joining us in this episode and helping us teleport around thanks Kyle so and, effortlessly uh, sorry effortlessly yeah effortlessly. like creme brulee <laughs> oh that's good I really uh, want some creme brulee yeah, so uh, yeah. suddenly and a big thank you to our dungeon master yeah. Martin Martin a lot of spinning plates yeah. this 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 time. I feel like we got everything sandwiched back <laughs> together into a coherent thing. Uh, back to a place where we can know where to go forward. Uh, in our game tonight, we use a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. Uh, you've seen them in our games, and we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. Uh, we use Dwarven Forge uh, for our mini uh, for our terrain, uh, Hero Forge, and Wiz Kids for our miniatures. Player character artwork by Elizabeth Pro and music by Tabletop Audio. And of course, don't forget to look at our uh, links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes merch. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible thanks to our incredible Patreon supporters. So check them out, check them out on Patreon. Dungeon Dudes help uh, make all of our work possible. We also have a Discord community exclusive for our patrons, so you can join us on Discord and chat with us about all things Drakenheim, D&D, &D, or anything else that you feel like, so join us there. With that, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time in Drakenheim.